Good evening. So today I'm going to talk about my wristwatch walkie-talkie instructable. Um, so I done did this instructable a few months ago. It was actually relatively well received, a couple couple thousand views actually. So that was really nice. Uh, I didn't actually make it in a form factor of a wristwatch. I'm still working on that, um, but I thought just demonstrating the walkie-talkie aspect of it would be okay. Uh, my inspiration comes from you know watching Power Rangers all my life. You know I always saw those wrist communicators are really really cool. And this person actually made a custom wrist communicator with the lights and sounds and things like that. It doesn't have the walkie-talkie feature. Uh, so I thought just kind of, you know, doing a little proof of concept of that would be cool. And also coming from well, smartwatches, you know, smartwatches, you're able to call over the watch. Um, so I always thought that was really, really cool. I wanted to make something similar to that. Um, so I didn't make it a wrist, wristwatch form factor yet. It's still getting there, but, you know, it's relatively easy at this point at this point forward. Uh, so a lot of the code comes from TMRH20. Uh, so this person made a library that allows you to transfer uh, stream audio using the NRF20 uh, 24 L01 modules, uh, transceiver modules, and Arduino. So this guy was demonstrated, you know, audio transmission between two NRF modules. So I just added a couple circuit components here and, and did a little bit change in the code to actually make it have a walkie-talkie effect. Essentially, when you press one button on one code, you press one button on one circuit and you'll transmit from that circuit. If you press it from the press a button from the other circuit, it'll transmit from the other circuit. You know, simple, you know, walkie-talkie action. So let's get into that. Um, so a couple, you know, the basic parts of the code. Um, looking at you know, the mic preamp, I just realized I misspelled mic or whatever. Uh, this is relatively easy. I found this you know, just doing a couple of Google searches. Uh, essentially, you have a microphone here. You're right, and it's connected to to a capacitor uh, to the base of a transistor. So what happens is when a pressure wave hits the micro microphone, you know, it turns that into a um, current. You know, the current, well, voltage, however we want to look at it, and the current you know drives the base of the transistor here, which causes a current through the collector. You know, obviously, the current times the volt, the current times the resistance gets you a voltage at the collector pin um, of the transistor, and that voltage is read into analog input zero on the Arduino. And using TMRH20's uh, library, you know, the, the Arduino samples analog zero and is actually you know, transmitting that um, that signal into audio you know, across you know the RF into RAO. Excuse me. <laughs> Uh, another part of the circuit that's pretty important is the button circuit, you know, relatively simple as well. Anyone who's ever dealt with buttons with Arduino knows the setup. You essentially have a button, you know, with a pull-down resistor to ground, and also the button's connected to 5 volts on the Arduino. And I, I like to put a capacitor in between the, these two terminals here, so buttons often, you know, when you press them, they have this sort of mechanical action that, you know, often counts, counts, causes bouncing. You know, this bouncing can, you know, mess up your signal depending on how you're sampling the output of the button. So I like to put a capacitor in between these two pins that that suppresses that bounce. And the button output is read by pin three on the Arduino. So we're just polling pin three. We're actually using an interrupt, which essentially pulls pin three. You know, when that pin is pushed or when it's pressed, uh, then it'll be transmitting audio from whatever circuit that the button was pressed on. Moving on from there, going into the speaker circuit, which is also um, pretty easy as well. If I can find it, I seem to have misplaced it here. Yeah, here it is. So TMRH20's library connects you know, the speaker outputs to pins 9 and 10. You know, that's kind of how we hardwired this library. And if you use a very small speaker, yeah, I'm actually using headphones. You know, it doesn't really matter what polarity. You, connect, you can connect it directly without damaging a pin. You don't have to worry about uh, too much current or anything like that. Maybe long term, you don't have to worry about too much current. You don't need a preamp. But just for a short demonstration, it's perfectly fine. Also looking at the pinouts for the NRF 24L01 module, the pins are actually spaced uh, kind of oddly. I mean, they're 0.1 uh, inches apart, but they, you know, they're the same. Two different pins are on the same row, so you can't just plug it directly into a breadboard. But the people at Arduino Info Wiki Spaces have a nice little um, diagram to show you, you know, where where things are connected at. I use these connections here, right here. Uh, with the only difference coming in with CE and CSN, so CE is now connected to pin 7 instead of pin 9, and CSN is connected to pin 8 instead of 10. But those are the only differences, and that's reflected in the code. So just connect, connect them as you see here uh, using uh, male to female jumper wires, and you should be good to go. Just quickly, it's pretty relatively short. Uh, TMRH20 has done a lot of the, pretty much all the hard work for us. Um, so we have a couple library includes. Um, TMRH20 made his audio library. He also modified the RF24 library and including some other things here. So the RF24 module, the Arduino is actually communicating with the RF24 module over SPI. 
and he has this printf um, library just for doing some serial outputs. So, so that's pretty much the most important part there. Um, so this is where the most in the most difference comes in here. Uh, so I used an interrupt. So I attached the button to pin three, which is an interrupt. So essentially, when this when the button it goes high, um, it will go into this short little method here that says that the button value is high. If you're reading the button and the button value is high, you'll transmit audio from that Arduino. If the button value is low, it will be receiving. And everything starts off in receiving mode to begin to begin with. So again, a pretty really a really, really simple, a couple simple circuits here or there, and just a small change in TMRH20's code, and you can get a, a pretty easy walkie-talkie uh, built with the Arduino. I actually tested this and I was able to get it uh, maybe 300 feet or so. Uh, I went. I had one of them staying in my apartment, and I walked about 300 feet outside my apartment. And had relatively decent transmission, so it was really, really cool. It was really, really neat to get it done. I just, I'm just working on putting in a wristwatch form factor now, so that'd be kind of cool. Also, brought it to uh, my university. I had TA for an instrumentation course, and I showed a couple of students there, and they they thought it was kind of fun. It's kind of nifty, something you can do in a relatively short period of time. So let's get into the demo. Hello there, so this will be the demo portion of the wristwatch walkie-talkie. I'm actually wearing my Instructables t-shirt. Uh, get, they get some free advertising today. Um, so let's, I'm just sliding my screen down here in a sec so you can see my setup. And this is why I chose to show the schematics in those pictures as opposed to just showing you the wiring because as you can see it gets a little bit messy. Um, but right here, yeah, these are pretty much two identical circuits. Right here is the microphone, yeah, that'd be picking up the voice, uh, the sound, here's the button. You know, the button's feeding in a digital pin 3 on the Arduino, the microphone's feeding into analog um, analog pin 0 on the Arduino. And it's the same same setup here, it's, you know, again, it's just two of the same thing. Microphone and button. Um, and here, I have my speaker, or my headphones. Well, I put them to be there. Standard headphones, you know, coming into uh, pins 9 and 10 on the Arduino, it's hard to see. And that's why I did the pictures at the beginning. Uh, again, I'm using two SparkFun Redboards, which is essentially Arduino Uno, except for it has like an FTDI converter as opposed to um, another chip to do the serial to USB conversion. Uh, so I'm going to demonstrate that you know this Arduino was receiving sound when I pushed a button on this Arduino. You hear a lot of feedback. So you know the auto transmission is only working you know when the button is pressed. Now I'm going to flip them real quick. Put the speaker output in the other Arduino. Now I'm just using two alligator clips to attach to the um, the headphone jack. Now I'm going to push the button in the other Arduino. You're going to hear the sound again coming from the other Arduino when it's pressed, when the button is pressed. Uh, so this is going to take a bit of um, acrobatics here. So so I'm actually going to be playing a sound into this speaker. I'm going to move away so that you won't hear the sound from my from my phone itself and you're going to hear the sound coming through on these speakers here. And then I'll just demonstrate it on one side because I have to run back and switch them and that's kind of a lot. I hope you just believe me that it would transmit from both of them. So I'm going to run away just for a second. I won't be too bad just to do the other one. I'll just switch them back and move the other one away and talk through the other one. Thank you. Bye. 